after a further study of the map, it looks like the town that's farther down here is actually Leadville. And we'll have to go through another pass like what we just did. Uh, I don't think it's going to be as like rocky or rough um, to get Buena Vista, but we actually have no idea. So we'll just be going, going with the flow. Peter and Dan here from the Adventure Guys channel. For the past five years, we've been living off the grid and overlanding to some of the most remote places on earth. Join us as we continue on the journey, bringing you an all new perspective from the saddle of our adventure bikes. Now that we're heading downhill, let's take a chill. It's 15 miles an hour. Oh, you would not want to fall down that. Wow, that's beautiful, but man, that would be the end of my bike. Let me just check Gaia to see if we go up or down. I assume we go down, but it might be an alternate route that we could take as bikes. We're right here. It looks like we just continue and go around a bend. This must be an alternate route that goes where only cool guys go. So this, uh, the very top of the peak there, or the pass, is 11,975 feet. That's a pretty tall pass. Yeah, for sure. And it looks like this wasn't the end of the rocks. No, certainly not. Whether you come up or go down, I assume you've got some rocks. Going down is like both easier and less fun because it's it's way easier so you're more chill but it's it's not exciting so you're like oh I can't wait till this ends it rocks certainly some stunning views as you head down around corners and then you come up to cliffs like what we were just at there ooh look at this I'm gonna ride down in these. Oh, I took the wrong route. <laughs> these are some washouts. Ooh. I'm sitting down whenever I get the chance. Same. My legs are tired. Oh wow, the, see that's the road down there I'm guessing, or like the highway. What a cliff. We right into rocks. Ugh. That'd be something I'd do going up. Coming down, I just wouldn't want to risk. Look at that. That's not too bad. You just have to go fast and not spin out on your rear. Oh man, my lower back. I know, I'm feeling it. All day standing up, it's pretty uh, tiresome for it. Oh, I mean, and yesterday was a lot of standing as well. Yeah. in this quarter. <laughs> There's a Jeep. <laughs> huh? Love I'm sitting through this. <laughs> You're sitting through it? <laughs> you ready for some butt ache up here?
As we neared the bottom of Hegerman Pass, the road began to become smooth, eventually changing to pavement as we came closer to Leadville. The road into Leadville was beautiful. The smooth pavement passing by Turquoise Lake and leading into the town was exactly what our backs needed after a long day of riding off-road. After a quick stop in town to fill our tanks and grab a few necessities, we headed back on the road making our way to Weston Pass in search of a camp for the night. After scouting a few likely places to camp, we found the perfect spot alongside a beautiful small river. Alright, so I've been sent ahead to save this spot for everyone. Because who would not want this little piece of paradise? Okay, so we got the Jeep cell sorted in here. Turned out to be a perfect camp. I was a little worried about the, the entrance to it since it was pretty steep, but it doesn't get better than this, you know? Getting out and doing an epic camp. And I mean, in this spot is like waterfalls and a beautiful river right beside us. I'm just surrounded by nice pretty trees. Park the bikes in a nice place and, you know, just chill for the night. So it's earlier than normal, but uh, I think it's the perfect time. Everyone's pretty tired and ready to just chill. This is uh, a lot better than a KOA or a hotel for me. This is awesome. So for anyone who's seen our earlier videos, we had the Perun Moto rear rack and its extension plate. And we got that just for this duffel. But if you get an X-frame or any other rack I'm assuming the Perun Moto and the rack won't merge together right away you need new hardware the Perun Moto sells the hardware to be able to adapt to this Outback Motor Trek rack uh, I didn't see it until a little bit later so the way we have it now is they're just strapped up on top you can see Dan's one consequence of that is it sits right there on the fuel uh, like the gas cap so when you have a fuel dongle like we had I have the Clark I have the Clark free flow stop. Dan got the KTM one that it's like a KTM power parts piece. And funny enough, the Clark one's holding up really good. It's totally fine. And then the KTM piece tore on his today from all the bouncing, I think. And then when we got to camp or just before coming into camp here, we took a look at it when we were fueling up in town in uh, Leadville there. And the top, like the whole point of the thing, the stops the gas from being able to spew I don't know what to call it like the vent cap basically it um, had popped off so he just had a torn up tube sitting there without a vent cap so he just popped it off and sadly right when we got into camp here he set up in this cozy looking spot but it was all sand and he walked away from his bike and it tipped over and it just was dumping fuel onto his pannier and all over the side of his bike so for now I'm just we're gonna find something to plug that uh, cap with probably duct tape and then I don't even know what just duct tape it and hope it sits there check it every so often um, I'm sure gasoline venting onto duct tape will make it melt and get all ugly so we'll just change it out until at least three hours of riding tomorrow over the bumpy pass because we'll be in Buena Vista and hopefully there they have that shop we've been looking for these past few days so we're all getting settled in I still got to take off my armor Dan's all cozy and PJs already We'll have a nice dinner and get ready to hit, uh, I think, what's it called? I already forgot what this pass is called, but I'll find it out. Ready to hit it tomorrow. All right, so this was an awesome camp. I love finding places like this. They're super memorable and special. I always have a great time. Um, 
Today I found out the name of the pass. It's Weston Pass that we're crossing over. I, it really only shows us 13 miles, so it might be steep. I don't know the elevation gain we're going to be doing, but it might not be half as long as the other pass. And then we've got a, a decent trail into Buena Vista where we'll be spending a few days. exciting because we're you know coming into Buena Vista is a fun thing for us we're gonna spend a few days there off the trail but then it's also like both fun and kind of sad because kind of the next three days of trail riding and we'll be done the Colorado BDR you know because Buena Vista we go up into the San Juan mountain range um, and then down into Lake Town, I'm pretty sure it's called, or Lake View or something like that. And uh, from there, it's up Imogen Pass, down into Telluride. And then out of Telluride, it's just a trail. in the middle. Yeah, makes me think there's mine in here. Oh, stink, my GoPro fell off. Somewhere. I see it. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> it's alive. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah, I got it. Sweet, so Dan, I had lost his front gopher there and he just recovered it, so that's good. This spot on the tower seems to be very vibrated. Did it crack off or did it just fall out like it wasn't? No, it just slid off somehow. Oh, it must not have been fully put in. Yeah, I must have not mounted it correctly. Yeah. sharp rocks here. <laughs> Look at that old cabin. A mine shed or something. One thing we've been looking at a bunch is the Skydio drone. Nothing looks quite cool. If anyone's had any experience with that, it'd be cool to hear. Because from the website and from videos I've seen of it, it looks pretty amazing. You can just have a remote on you, launch the thing, and then uh, I'm gonna pull over up ahead just to see if we're heading the right direction. So, um, and it like, it'll follow you and do all of those same cool shots, but it cannot crash. Here, we're gonna pull in here. just pull over here the convenience for a biker with that where you don't need a remote you can just launch it and it'll do its thing is that you don't need to worry about it I think we we just continue on down this road 
This is Weston Pass though, as high as like the actual pass goes. There's probably some cool trails that lead everywhere. So that looks like the top of Weston Pass from where you can drive. There's some offshoot roads that probably get way up there. We got the top of there, I can see a road. Now we just, uh, I believe we'll be heading mostly downhill. Yeah, and there's plenty of this now. Okay. After studying the map, Dan and I found there is an alternate route that takes you on a harder road through the forest, but loops you back onto the main trail of the BDR. Yeah, this looks more like it. First gear. Ooh, grit. <laughs> Oh, stink. I thought I could push those through those branches and they just pushed me into the rut. Yeah. This would have been fun coming up this way. See, way funner than going on the main route, eh? Yeah, yeah. Just totally not link up at all. Yeah. This leads to somebody's off grid cabin. Whoa, boy. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> that was fun. Stay tuned as we near Buena Vista and discover the road ahead isn't going to be as much of a smooth sail as we had thought.